All right, well, uh, uh, I've got another day that I want to share with you. Some of the stuff that's going on in my mind and that, you know. Uh, you know, as we all know, you know, we're getting close to election. And, uh, you know, we hear what Trump has to say. We hear what Kamala has to say, you know. And a lot of us, we don't really know who to believe or who to trust or anything, you know. Uh, I was listening to uh, a, a pastor on uh, the YouTube this morning, and he was discussing truth. And it's a couple things really stuck to me about truth, you know. And uh, one, one of the things uh, about truth is, you know, some people don't believe there is any truth, you know. But the question is, is that true? You know, that's something to think about. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and as he was talking, he shared a, a thing about, you know, uh, uh, about truth. And he talked about, uh, say, a gentleman hired another gentleman and he was going to work on his house. And he says, uh, I'll give you $10 an hour. And the guy says, OK, we'll do that, you know. And so the guy, he worked 10 hours, you know, and he went to get his money. And the guy goes, okay, well, you worked 10 hours, at $10 an hour. And he handed him $100, you know. And the guy says, oh, no, that, that's, that's not true. According to my math, you owe me $1,000, you know. So what is truth, you know? Well, there is only one, one place where truth is, okay? And I want to share it in the scriptures with you because the Bible is true. Uh, and if you was to go to John uh, chapter 1 and verse 17, you'll, you'll read there what it says about that, you know. And, and it says right here in John chapter 1 verse 17, it said that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus said was true, you know. The other day, I don't know if you heard my other deal, but, you know, I, I talked about God cannot lie. See, everything's true. You know, you want to know the truth, you'll find it in the Bible. So I'd, I'd highly recommend, you know, that you, if you want to know the truth of everything in life and that, you need to read the Bible. You need to know Jesus. You know, I would say give your heart time, you know, and uh, let the Holy Spirit come into your heart. And, and he'll guide and direct you and he'll bring things to your remembrance of, of the things that God has spoke to you, you know, through his word and stuff. So uh, anyways, this is really not what I wanted to discuss. What I wanted to talk about was uh, what was going on in her mind, you know. And uh, the reason why I titled this, because this is about Mary, you know. And she was at the cross with Jesus, you know. And there's some scriptures here I'd like to read to you about this, you know. And you'll find these scriptures in John chapter 19. And then uh, it starts in verse 25. And it says right here, it says, And now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, I don't know how to say that, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, which is probably John, which is, we're reading this out of John, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. Now after this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. And now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his hyssop, hyssop and put it in his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So we see Jesus right here gave, giving up the ghost on the cross. There's a whole lot of different stories on this, you know. 
Uh, but one thing I got, I want to say is, you know, see, God is a living God. He's the eternal God. Uh, no man could take his life. He said that. No man can take my life. I lay it down. He had to, he lays his life down. I don't know if you understand that. But he was almighty, all impotent. He's the all-knowing. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He's the living God. We live because of him, you know. So he had to lay it down. Jesus laid his life down. He wasn't no wimp or nothing, man. He knew what he was doing. Uh, the day that he asked his disciples, you know, whom do the people say that I am? And they said, oh, some say you're Elijah, John the Baptist, and that. But he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter, you know, he said, uh, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, you know. And Jesus said, man, that, that you know, flesh and blood revealed that to you, but my father who art in heaven, Peter. But just a, a, not much longer, they went down the road and Jesus was talking about what he was going to go through. And Peter was like, oh, not so, not so, you know. And Jesus said, get thou behind me, Satan, you know. And, and why did Jesus say that? Jesus said that. Because Peter was getting out of what Jesus was there for. Jesus came for a purpose, you guys. He knew what he was doing from the very beginning, you know. He knows what he was born. He knew where he came from, everything. He knew all things. He had to fulfill the scriptures and all that stuff. So, which is just to let you know, he wasn't a wimp. And he was hanging on that cross, folks. I don't, I can't even fathom. Beard plucked out, crown thrones around my head, spikes through my hands and my feet and stuff, you know. It had to be devastating. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, was sitting there and watching her son go through this. Now, you mothers out there that got babies, can you, I'm sure that you can just imagine how horrible that would be to sit there and watch your child go through this, you know. And, you know, there's no telling what was going through her mind. I, I have no idea. I, I, can, I can have assumptions, you know, and that's kind of what I'm going to share here is maybe some assumptions that that might have been going through her mind, you know. Uh, I know that I lost my little girl, Crystal, one time for about 20 minutes in Hemet, California. And what it was is I was uh, all wrapped up with my mother helping her around her place. And I, we'd been there about 15, 20 minutes or so, and... Uh, I said, Mom, you know where Crystal is? And she goes, no, I don't. I started looking around for my daughter, and I couldn't find her nowhere. I couldn't see her nowhere. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that is the most devastating thing that I've ever experienced in my life. That right there just, I lost it, okay? I was running through the neighborhood. I was screaming to the top of my lungs, hollering her name, and then listening for her, just to, to hear her voice, Daddy, Daddy. There was no voices or anything going on. I was losing it. I ran out onto the main highway. I remember looking up and down, and there were cars going up and down the streets. There was big signal lights. Cars were crossing. I was looking everywhere, screaming to the top of my lungs for my daughter. No sound nowhere. I went back in. I was running back into where my the neighborhood where my mother was, and she said, Jimmy, Jimmy, my mother was hollering. She said, Jimmy, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I go, what do you mean? She goes, she's in the car. She's asleep. She crawled in the car and went to sleep. Praise God. I can't, I, I'm not going to go through all that. So many things was going through my man, my mind. In seconds, just like that, I was just thinking. And, and, and my mother was like, son. You got to get a grip on yourself, you know. I said, get a grip on myself. You might as well kill me if I lose my baby, you know. So I could just can't fathom what Mary was going through here, you know. But I have some scriptures here that, you know, that I want to share that, you know, some things that uh, maybe she uh, might have been thinking about some of these things, you know. Uh, so I'm going to go to Luke chapter 1. Uh and we're going to start at verse 28. Luke chapter 1, verse 20. Uh, well, what did I do here? I think I lost. Uh, 
Oh, here, here we go, here we go. Oh, that's wrong. Well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go right because I have lost this. Luke chapter 1. No, oh, here, here it is, right here. And it says here in Luke chapter 1, verse 20, 28, it says, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So, you know, this might be something that was kind of going through her mind, you know, uh, because uh, who knows what was going through her mind, to be honest, you, you guys. I know what went through my, it was devastating for me. Uh, so I'm sure that it was for her too. And there's no telling, you know. And I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time here, uh, so I'm, I am going to kind of discuss this last this last little scripture with you, uh, because I've experienced this, you know, myself, and I think a lot of people do, you know. And this is another time, you know, maybe Mary was thinking about this, because, you know, I'm sharing with you what happened to me when I lost my child and that, you know. And uh, this is what we're going to talk about here is... Uh, it says that and now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers, you know. So we see here that... Uh, uh, when the when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why hast thou dealt with us behold thy father and i have sought thee sorrowfully and and man that's what i got man i know dude it's it's horrible and he said unto them how is it that ye sought me must i must i not that i must be about my father's business and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Maybe this is what was going through her mind, too. Maybe she was remembering when she had lost him. Maybe she was thinking about uh, the, the wedding that she was at. The first miracle Jesus did, you know, was at the wedding, you know, turning the uh, water into wine. But here we read that they had lost Jesus, you know. And I don't know how many times I lose Jesus. And I think a lot of us do. Uh, we get off and uh, we get wrapped in the things that are around us, you know. We get tied up in our worldly ways, you know. And uh, sometimes we may, may not even pray for a day or two. Uh, maybe we don't even think about God because now we're in control of everything, you know. You know, and and my prayer is that if anybody is there and and in that stage right now, 
you know, it says that Mary and Joseph, they turned around and went three days back. It, to me, that it's like an, a, repent, a repent. You repent, you turn around, and you go back. And where did they find Jesus? They found Jesus in the synagogue. And he was talking with all these doctors and that, you know. To me, that's kind of like a picture of, you know, that maybe you need to go back to church. Maybe you haven't been going to church, you know. Uh, there, this is where the, the people all gather together, you know. I've heard so many people say things like, well, I don't like so and so, I don't like the way that they treated me and everything, you know. You, you know, we all rub up against each other and that, but we shouldn't let those kind of differences separate us from the Word of God. You know, we should be there to hear the Word of God. And when we get in there, we need to just worship Him and listen to what God has to say to us, you know. Uh, it's not about mixed emotions or feelings or anything like that. So uh, maybe there's somebody out there that has, you know, kind of forgot about Jesus and that. And my prayer would be that uh, you would turn around, call out to the Lord. Though he seemed far away, yet he's right there, you know, and get back into fellowship with him. These are my prayers for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you again later. Bye-bye.